Welcome to Small Arm Solutions. So today we're looking at the DPMS AP4 Gen 2. Now you've seen me do some videos in the past on the DPMS Gen 2, but what you see me do them on is the Gen 2 Recon. Uh, this Recon is my personal rifle uh, that I've, I'm personally very impressed with. Recon is probably one step up from the uh, AP4. Uh, the AP4 is a, is a general basic carbine, and you have the Recon, which gives you some more of the advanced features of a free-floating handguard, a heavy match stainless steel barrel, and so forth. So what we're going to be talking about specifically is the AP4. Now, the original AP4 carbine was based off of standard AR-10 type uh, receivers. Of course, you had the DPMS uh, round receivers in the back. But the uh, Gen 2 was a short receiver. So basically what you did was you shortened down the upper and lower receiver to make the rifle more compact, uh, make it shorter. Uh, of course, by doing that, you're looking at making a whole bunch of proprietary components, uh, such as the upper receiver, lower receiver, charging handle, and bolt carrier group, and bolt. Those parts all of a sudden became uh, proprietary because they are sort of right in the middle between an AR-15 and an AR-10 in size. So if you want to say AR-12 and a half, that's probably more accurate. For as far as the size is concerned. This was the first time this was done, uh, but it was by DPMS, with taking in the AR-10 and shortening it down. Uh, not saying that the original AR-10 was oversized. Uh, it was built for a 7.62 cartridge. There's been a lot of uh, updates in technology over the last 60 years uh, in materials and strength and so forth uh, to make these things that much more compact and that much more uh, lightweight. Um, I, you know, I will say we'll talk more about this when we talk about shooting is, you know, it's great to have lightweight, but one of the negative aspects of the lightweight is you get recoil, especially with the 308 or 7.62 by 51 millimeter rifle. So I think what we're going to do now is we're going to go from back to front and uh, to show what's on this rifle. First, we have a standard mill spec type stock assembly, uh, which is uh, on a, on a receiver extension that has six positions. Now, the buffer system that you use on the 308, there's two different ways to go about doing this. The first one is to use an extended buffer, uh, so it's longer from the 308, obviously because you have a longer uh, bolt carrier. Uh, by utilizing the longer receiver extension, you can use a standard M4, you know, H or H1, H2, H3, and so forth buffers, the so standard buffers. Now, if you choose to want to go with the standard mill spec receiver extension, you have to use a modified buffer, which is shorter. Uh, so, so you're probably taking at least one of the weights out of it, so you're going to have a much lighter buffer, which again, you're going to get more uh, recoil out of that, but uh, that's the way to keep your parts more in common. But this one utilizes the, 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 the shorter buffer, which we'll take a look at when we take it apart. Upper and lower receiver, you're looking at forgings, uh, 775T6 aircraft grade aluminum, so uh, hard coat anodized into uh, mil spec black. Now, this is the basic carbine. This is a basic no frills, uh, lightweight carbine. So you have a standard A2 pistol grip. You have standard A2 uh, type double heat shield handguards. Now you have a forward assist, as you can see. You have a fire cartridge case deflector, an ejection port cover, dust cover. And on the left side, your standard components, your standard safety, your standard bolt catch. Bolt catch has a nice long uh, extension on the bottom so you can push in to lock the bolt open to the rear. Now, looking at the bottom, you'll see we have a flared magazine well, which gives you a lot of, uh, makes it much easier to uh, install a magazine in, in low-level light conditions. Now, you'll see that the trigger guard is machined into the lower receiver, so it's not a separate component. It is oversized for use with gloved hands. Now, looking at the barrel, we're looking at 415 chrome molly vanadium steel. We have a 1 in 10 inch twist. It is a chrome line barrel. The front sight base we have has an A2 uh, square front sight post with a F mark front sight base. F mark front sight base is due to the fact we're using a flat top upper receiver that aligns the rear sight properly with the front sight post. Companies who decide not to use the F mark front sight base are going to use a longer front sight post so you get a proper alignment between your front and rear sights, but they're using a proper F mark front sight base on here. So we have a we have the evil bayonet lug. Magazines are the SR25 type. These magazines are manufactured by DPMS in house. Um, this, however, this rifle will take any kind of magazine during testing. We used uh, P mags, we use uh, DPMS, we use Lancer ACMs, uh, DNH Tactical Steel. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go inside and take a look. The first thing we're gonna take a look at the inside is the trigger mechanism. This particular rifle comes with a standard mill spec trigger mechanism. This is a broke right at 7.25 pounds uh, on my military scale weights. Now we're gonna talk a little bit more about the buffer. As we spoke before, there's two ways of going about doing this. Here we have a standard mill spec buffer. This particular one is an H. This is a two steel and one tungsten uh, weight slug in it. And this is the modified one for the 308. 
Now, if you were to utilize this particular one in the 308, you would have to use the longer receiver extension, the custom receiver extension. Where since DPMS chose to use a standard mill spec, they are going with the shorter buffer for use with this rifle. Now, looking at the receiver, you can see very, very well machined, no machining marks whatsoever. On the front, you have some gripping grooves on the front of the magazine well. Now, I'm going to take a look at the bolt carrier groups to show how unique they are uh, with a shorter receiver. Here we have a standard 308 AR-10 type bolt carrier group compared to the DPMS Gen 2. And now we have a standard 5.56 millimeter. As we can see, we're right in the middle. We've come down uh, probably about a half inch uh, on overall length. But the thickness of the, of the bulk carrier is also much different as well. The thickness of the bulk carrier of the G2 is about the same as that of the 5.56. Something else I want to take a good close look at is the carrier key. Now this is a very, very unique uh, modification to this rifle as well. Now what they've done here is they made a one-piece bolt carrier, which has a bolt carrier and this carrier key area. Now instead of attaching the carrier key by two screws, you have a stainless steel tube that screws into place into the directly into the bolt carrier. And once it's aligned, you have a, a you have a roll pin that's drilled through it. Now what this does is it prevents any possibility of gas leakage coming out of the carrier key. Now this is one of the areas where on the uh, you know, in the AR-15M16 type weapon systems that if your carrier key screws come loose or they break, you lose gas and the rifle will malfunction, it will short stroke. This totally eliminates the possibility of that happening. The only way you can get any gas leakage at all from this bolt carrier is if you have uh, damaged or no gas rings in. So we're going to remove the, the firing pin retaining pin, drop out the firing pin. As we can see, we have an extra long firing pin uh, just due to the shorter bolt carrier group. You can see that we have a longer tip on it as well. Drop out the cam pin, pull the bolt out. Now we can see how the bolt has a very different shape from the standard AR-10. You don't have the slope in, the, in here. Now this is where it gets really interesting. The Gen 2 completely does away with the extractor spring and in, the, in its place it uses a rubber bumper or a rubber buffer. And this rubber buffer I think is inspired by the standard uh, O-ring that we put on M16s, AR-15s for several years um, to increase the extractor force by a factor of three. So rather than go with the extractor spring and all, they just went ahead and replaced the entire thing with a big slug of, uh, of rubber that fits right inside. I certainly believe by removing the, the spring and, and putting in place the, you know, the rubber buffer, I think you're definitely going to have at least two to three times the strength you would with the spring anyways, and it's not going to wear out nearly as quickly as the spring because obviously the rubber's not going to take a set. Another modification that was done to the bolt was the uh, addition of another ejector. And another ejector, what that will do is it will, with the higher cyclic rate that you can get from some of these 308 rifles, especially when you're dealing with a, a lighter buffer, it enables you to uh, get that cartridge case out of there quicker so there's no chance of the the bolt overrunning the uh, ejector, basically meaning that the bolt's running too fast, the ejector doesn't have time to kick the cartridge case out. By adding the additional uh, ejector in here, you're ensuring it's going to get out much quicker so you're not going to have the issue with the failures to eject. You also have a modification to the bolt lugs as well. You'll see we have more of a rounded profile to these rather than a squared off. Uh, that is definitely a, a uh, enhancement for as far as uh, the stress relief uh, by not having the sharp edges on there. Uh, you're seeing a lot of manufacturers who have done this in, in, in their own ways, uh, but this also requires a specific receiver extension as well. It's not going to utilize a standard uh, AR-10 type receiver extension. So for reassembly, we just drop the buffer back right into that little, little slot on the uh, extractor. You assemble like normal. You just see we have our do have our three beer can gas rings on there. We do have a good chrome plated, chrome lined bolt carrier as well. As per mill spec. Now we're going to take a closer look at the upper receiver. Now, you, I doubt you'll be able to see, but you will see that we do have uh, feet, extended feed ramps on the barrel extension as well as the upper receiver. Your charging handle is proprietary due to the fact that you have a shorter length upper receiver. The AP4 Gen 2 also comes with a, a Magpul M-Bus uh, rear sight. 
adjustable for uh, windage only. So we're gonna take the handguards off and take a look under the hand, under the handguards. As we see, we have a slightly heavier profile. Uh, we do have a carbine gas system on here. So you do have a relatively thicker barrel compared to some of these pencil barrels that you're gonna see, which is gonna generally give you a little bit better accuracy. Now the handguards, as you can see, there is no double heat shield in there. These are just heavy polymer handguards, which uh, this will this would do just fine due to the fact that you are able to, uh, not firing fully automatic, so you're not gonna melt these down. You have more options for handguards as, as well if you wanna put them on here. Looking at the front sight base you see here, drilled and pinned. Awesome thing, great things. Uh, very pleased to have that. The AP4 comes with a muzzle brake. As you can see, it's a rather extended one. It does have multiple holes going all the way around it for, to, you know, to, to work as an effective muzzle brake. Now, I will tell you, this does not decrease sound by no means. This is basically a sound enhancer. Uh, that's one of the uh, trade-offs that you have with a muzzle brake. So put this back together. Now you can use many of your of the, of similar enhancements or uh, like, like hand guards. You can put additional pistol grips, stocks on here. That stuff is all the same. The only difference really is the lower is the lower upper receiver bolt carrier bolt and charging handle. Everything else is factory standard, so you'd be able to uh, put whatever else you would like on it to enhance it. I think what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go to the range and we're gonna see how this one shoots. The magazines tested were the DPMS steel, which it came with, the uh, Knight's Armament steel, the PMAG Gens 2 and 3, Lancer, uh, DNH Tactical, and the Hexmag. Now, the ammunition tested was the Black Hills 308 175 grain OTM, uh, had an had a average velocity of 2,368 feet per second. The Black Hills 308 178 grain ELDX, uh, average velocity of 2,443 feet per second, and the SIG 308 Winchester 168 grain OTM, which averaged 2,427 feet per second. Now, as you can see from the targets, we have three targets here. The, fir uh, the first target was 2.4 inches, the second 2.7, and the third was 2.9. What we noticed was as the rifle would heat up, that uh, the, the, the group would, would slightly start to shift. And that's indicative of having a barrel that's as light as this, as with a caliber like this. Uh, we saw the similar thing to the M14 uh, when we shot, as that, as that heated up, the group shifted to the left as well. However, for this type of a rifle, uh, 2.4 or 2.7 or 2.9 is a very, very acceptable uh, group size. So you have a lightweight 7.25 pound 308 carbine here. This is an excellent starter carbine. This is an excellent carbine for a backpacker or somebody who's going to be in the woods and has a fear of encountering some kind of a, of a larger animal or something. Uh, you can utilize any kind of 308 or 762 ammunition that you would want. Uh, overall quality is excellent. Reliability was excellent. Again, this is not the first time I have messed around with any of the DPMS uh, Gen 2 308s. I actually have quite a bit of rounds through them, mostly through the recon, because I've uh, reviewed two different recons plus the one that I, that I own myself. And I can say that probably through all three rifles, I've definitely had close to 2,000 plus rounds through them and never had a single malfunction. So the, the quality is right there with DPMS. The Gen 2 is a very, very sound rifle. Um, the quality is excellent. Now your MSRP is $1,499. So $1,499 for an incredibly high quality rifle. Uh, this definitely is down there in the lower realm of prices, but it's not in the lower realm of quality. One of the benefits of going with a rifle like this is you have a rifle that's manufactured by one manufacturer. It's not put together by multiple parts, so you know everything is going to work together. DPMS manufactures most of their own parts in-house. Now, the only negative aspect that can be looked at is the fact that the upper lower receiver, bolt carrier, bolt, and charging handle are proprietary. Um, you have to have the DPMS parts for it. However, as far as everything else is concerned, 
it's not. You can put any stock assembly, any pistol grip assembly. You can put any of the um, additions to ambi features of the safety of the bulk of the magazine release. Uh, any muzzle device that you want, you want to suppress it, you can do that. So, you know, you only have uh, just this area right in here where you're pretty much uh, going to be proprietary. But this is very well built. I wouldn't foresee any issues or anything happening with it. If you all enjoyed this video, if you do, please click like, please subscribe, and even better, share. Thank you.